was worth $78 billion a year. That's how much money flows through it. It's extremely fragmented. 67% of the industry are single operator uh, shops. What that means is if I'm a mechanic and I'm starting my own shop, I don't hire any employees, I do everything on my own. All of the books, all of the online, all of the software, all of the car work. I do it myself. I don't need to add scheduling on top of that. And ultimately, this uh, scheduling foothold can move into new pain points. So software growth over time, eventually we can expand it to POS systems, into part sorting, things like that. It also works for accounting. A lot of the mechanics I spoke to have accountants that they hire, but have issues with them. They spend a lot of money on these, mechan or on these accountants, but they're not getting their money's worth. They might be having issues with uh, those accountants. More than one of the mechanics that I spoke to uh, had significant, significant enough issues with their accounting that they had to pay money back to the federal government because their accountant didn't do things properly. And then for payment plans, um, a lot of mechanic shops and uh, dealerships make a lot of their money from credit cards, doing payment plans over time. That's also something that we can move into eventually. I'd love to hear back from you. Um, again, my name is Ali. This is my contact info. Thanks. All right, questions? Yeah, my, my dad runs an auto, body, an auto body repair shop. Do you think this technology would work for a body shop as well as a mechanic shop? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is just the scheduling software, and so it's not actually related to the like what's being fixed on the car, and so it would be applicable there. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Great presentation, Allie. Thanks. I think it definitely seems like a big problem that I've experienced. I put off my oil changes because I hate calling people yeah. and going through that process. Um, it is surprising to me that there isn't a solution out there already. Have you found any kind of competitors for this idea? Yeah, so a lot of the software that's being utilized is uh, called Mitchell One. There's a few other ones, but that's really the biggest one. They do allow text message scheduling. Um, it's a very unintuitive process. It's very rusty and old. Only one of the mechanics that I spoke to in the Iowa City area actually used them for scheduling software. Um, and they did use the text message reminder, but they didn't really like it. They found it pretty difficult to use. They found it added a lot of extra steps um, and thought ultimately that it was more trouble than it was worth. I don't really have a question. I'm just going to say this is a really good idea. I feel like you see this a little bit lately in like healthcare and care salons and you open schedule, you know, with a tax. So this is really cool. Um, yeah, just a great idea. Thanks, I appreciate it. Did you get a price point of what a mechanic, independent mechanic, would be willing to pay? Um, I'm still working on price. This is a pretty new pivot. Um, however, a lot of them are paying significant amounts for their software on the lower end, 150 to 200 a month. On the higher end, anywhere from $500. Or for dealerships, they were paying up to $4,000 for their software because it's being put on multiple different computers throughout the dealership. Have you, have you worked with uh, like Square, Stripe, or uh, any of the, um, a lot of the big POS systems on how this is going to work with the API integration? Um, I haven't yet. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't yet, but I plan on integrating that stuff. And that's ultimately why uh, the payment plans would be further out, especially, or like growing the software into other stuff would be further out. Um, in terms of integration, that's not some, I'm not quite at the step to be building the software just yet, um, but it's something I'm going to be looking into. What has been the like you? Yeah, so. I originally started with building the company, uh, calling it Auto Compete, and I was compiling together different vendors, um, different vendors parts into a single location and allowing mechanics to search through those parts all in one place so that they weren't going to a lot of different websites and stuff. Ultimately, I found that mechanics don't have as big of an issue with that as I thought that they did. Uh, a lot of them work with local vendors, a lot of them it's based specifically on when the part can get there, and so it just wasn't something that I was seeing a lot of future runway with. Yeah. 
why this idea? What gets you excited about working on this specific project? Yeah, so I was a technical service manager at an auto uh, repair shop in the area for two, two summers ago now, um, and I really enjoyed working on it. Um, I also just, I know that there's not a lot of like trust and, uh, there's not a lot of trust in the repair industry and it's a pretty antiquated system and I ultimately found that that system was antiquated when I was working there and I thought that this would be a good way to solve that. Um, that would be such a cool thing to add into your pitch flow is like what is your connection to what were your challenges well maybe even like saying a really frustrated story that you had like I had to do this and then this happened and blah 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 uh, because I don't know anything about this industry but seeing your personal connection to it would help kind of position you expertly in the pitch and then also let people know why you're so excited about solving this problem so I think that is really cool to hear and I would love to see that show up in your deck. Yeah. Stories are good. Thank you. Yeah, just a suggestion. Um, when it comes time to, to do software, uh, we use Acuity with, with ours. It's, it's, a, it's a good package. It does, you can do online scheduling and it does text message reminders and you can set it up for various things like that. Um, but they also have an API. I haven't, I haven't even explored it, but um, you know, when it, when it comes time to start building your software, perhaps you could look into you know, one of those kinds of scheduling packages that already does some of the things that you're talking about, right. but that you could bolt on other specific pieces for this industry. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, kind of thinking about all this, um, her question of like the hair industry, do you envision this going on to like the website? Because like when you go to a salon now, you can schedule with the actual stylist, and there's a text message that's it's very modern, I think, for the most part. But it's you go to me for me. I go to the Google that chooses salon, and then there's a variety of ways I can. If I have a stylist in mind. I will know the person. If I don't, I can just select the um, whatever it is I'm looking for. What's it called? The cut or the service. Is that kind of how you envision this going, like building the software so that it would be attached to their website? Yeah, so the scheduling process is ultimately really two parts. The first part is um, going in doing that initial inspection. The secondary part it comes after getting approval to do the work that the mechanic is recommending. And so that original inspection is what they're ultimately scheduling online up front, and that inspection you block off an hour for an inspection or an, or an oil change or something like that. Um, and then the mechanic would come back and say, this is when I am able to have it done by. Does that work for you? But yes. I have an existential industry question based off that. Uh, is there a potential for an evolution of a, like a sort of couture mechanic industry situation what I mean by that is, okay, so I know people who go to family-owned shops, right? I've always had good history there, but then they hired a person who is not a great employee. So I no longer can depend on their service. Whereas I go to a salon, I know who my specific stylist is. Right. Is there a way that maybe this could uh, introduce the whole idea of hiring a specific mechanic within the shop? Yeah, I hadn't considered that, but I think that's potentially a good idea. Thank yeah, because you. you have ratings with salons. Like, right. Not even ratings, but like this is uh, an expert level. This is, yeah, you have right. tiers. Yeah, so same I, thing with masseuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I wonder if you could do that with a mechanic. Like, this guy's actually really good at blah, blah, blah. Versus <clears> this guy's learning and he'll work on your Yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. That's, my other, my customer pain point is, I don't know, Jack anything about cars and so they'll call me and be like we need to do the blah 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 the, the this thing this oil this so is there like a way to like really have that more explained when you get the approval text like actually understanding what they're asking you to do why it's important because it all sounds like gibberish to me yeah so ultimately i'm thinking that when the mechanic is sending that text back there's going to be based on the parts that they're putting in and what they are saying what work needs to be done 
there will be an automated or like generated response that'll say this is likely what the recommendation is, and, and then the mechanic, why. here's why, and the mechanic can go in and add specific comments and say this is what it was for your particular car. Um, that would be so helpful. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe have a learn more. Yes. Kind of, kind of learn more. Yeah. Like. If you don't do this today, your car will not drive. Or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, if you yeah. Days, like within a hundred thousand miles, and I'm like, I'm at seventy thousand miles. Why do I need to do this right now? Right. And so it feels right. like it's just like trying to rope me into something I don't need. But like, if you're like, no, bro, if you don't do this, you're you're gonna be on the side of the road tomorrow. Right. Like, I need to know that level of detail. Right. Yeah. For a learn more button. And imagining like. The name of the part, and then like how many flames are next to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the little fire. The yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of importance: one flame, two flames. Yes. <laughs> um, have you uh, fleshed out your core values? Um, no, not yet. Um, this pivot is pretty new. I started this pivot about a week and a half ago. Woo. Yeah. So. So did your previous iteration have core values? Um. Not really, no. <laughs> but yeah, um, that it's just it's still a work in progress. I, I would your core values could potentially not change based on your your pivot. Mm -hmm. I would recommend doing those because it will help you to make decisions easier on who you want to work with, and um, if your core values aren't aligned, it's just not gonna be a smooth sailing relationship. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, I'm kind of curious, um, you're talking about being able to schedule up ahead of time, um, and this is, again, kind of like everyone else, I don't know a lot about like how mechanics actually do their work on their side. Um, when people go in and they schedule, can you make a determination of about how much time uh, that appointment is going to make? Or do you find, especially from your own experience, that like you said, they go in and they tend to just say like, hey, we give everyone like a block of time, and then from that we have to put in additional time. Like how does it, how does the scheduling around that work? Yeah, so like I said, it's in two parts. So the first part is the initial inspection. That inspection is pretty much always blocked off as an hour. Um, you want to give your technician good enough time to be able to really get in there, understand the car, what's going on, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, then secondarily would come the part that where the time is specific to each vehicle. Um, and so you wouldn't know that before doing the inspection, but they would be able to tell you that once the inspection has been done in that approval text. Okay. The reason I was asking is I was thinking like there's kind of two parts to this, and I, I was wondering if you thought about it. Um, because you, you have to schedule out, of course, like how much time each appointment needs, but then on top of that is you also have the scheduling of your employees. Right. Right. And have you started looking into like what that part looks like? Are you going to try to manage that with your uh, with your product, or are you thinking that that's just like a number that they would plug in from some other system to start with? Yeah. So the scheduling of the employees is pretty much a mirror image of the mm -hmm. scheduling of the customers, um, and most of the time, at least in my experience, it's a, it's a sort of thing of, here is the ticket, work on this until you're finished. When you're done, bring it back to me, I will give you your next ticket. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, I'll ask our traditional final question. What can we as a community do to help you? Yeah, so um, ultimately I'm gonna be moving into software development soon. Um, and so I'm going to need help with that, and then just in general, yeah, so if you feel like you've got a good opinion or a good voice, I would love to hear from you. Excellent. All right. Let's give Allie another round.